Hello and welcome to another episode of the sketch series. Today I'm going to be drawing Power Girl and specifically I'm going to be drawing the one from the New 52. Um, I kind of like the redesign. Uh, she's African American. Uh, she's got cool hair, a really cool outfit, and it, the redesign was actually done by one of my favorite artists, Kenneth Rockefort. So if you've never looked him up, you should look him up. He's amazing. He does a lot of watercolor stuff and it just looks gorgeous. Now as you can see here, I already laid down the foundations which is basically my sketch phase and I'm working on my pens already. For the sketch phase you may notice a couple of things, mostly that my framing for women has changed. Instead of trying to frame them the same way I do with men, I decided to start off with kind of a box and I basically form some kind of a 3D boxed figure. And you can kind of see that underneath. There's a box to the end of where the breasts are, and then it tilts back down to where the stomach meets the pelvis. And then there's the side um, of the box where the uh, rib cage would be. And uh, I kind of position everything around that. Um, it's kind of nice to find and develop your own way of framing and uh, building the architecture, I guess you would say, of characters because everyone is different and there are there are hundreds of ways to build the the armature the architecture um, the the bones the structure underneath you can do a very standard loomis type or you can do a much looser type with uh, swirls or ovals or circles um, or you can do boxes I like to mix and match whatever works for me and for women because of the way the breasts uh, are pronounced usually um, the boxes and the straight lines really help me coordinate where how the breast should fall on the chest and how big they should be with relation to each other and it's really helping me develop my female figure a lot as you can see it's come a long way from the first video first female video I did and sort of if you follow my Instagram kind of the first uh, female drawings that I did were terrible because I would basically draw male armature underneath and then try to add boobs and butt and it doesn't really work that way um, their physique is different it's built differently the way muscle falls on them is slightly different and I'm really enjoying the challenge and the learning that I'm acquiring from all of this as you can see here um, her outfit is really cool it has like a little jacket and then instead of having the traditional opening that power girl has where it shows a lot of cleavage um, Tanya's uh, her name is Tanya is much smaller so I kinda dig that because it seems more realistic she's wearing kind of like a one-piece suit um, it has really cool color coordination it's like blues uh, golds and whites and and some grays it's really nice it's not very busy and uh, it makes sense it, it makes sense you would see someone wear this kinda of thing like these um, the boots with the knee-high pads I, I really dig that I like when outfits reflect um, the ability to use them. Sometimes people design characters or I see some superheroes, especially some 90s superheroes that are designed to look cool but when you think about it they're not very functional at all so it doesn't really work out very well. I like when things are functional, I like when things work out, I like the bandages that she seems to have up her arms to kind of reinforce her. Power Girl is very strong, she's I think Superman's uh, I guess sister or the female version of Superman. I'm not quite familiar with her origin. Um, all I know is that this power girl was given her powers by the original one so I don't know how that works. Um, but as for uh, coloring which we're moving on to now you can kinda see me coloring in uh, she's African American so she coloring her is a lot different. I like to start with a very light uh, a very light brown or tan and then kind of darken my way in. Whereas with my um, Caucasian or other colored, uh, lighter colored characters, I like to just go for the bold colors and then come back in with lighter markers and this way like establish my darks and then work on my lights. But I'm not very familiar with uh, coloring African American characters so I feel like I would mess up if I do that. So I like to start the safe way which is um, start very light because you can always go darker so you can always layer on top make it a little bit darker um, 
but once you go too dark you can you can't reverse it um so it's it's a it's a tough thing but it's worth practicing and it's worth uh, giving it a shot um as for her lips i should have i like the brown that i used but i should have also thrown in a little bit of pink on top and maybe some pink on her skin to give her a little bit more of a, a lively hue um hindsight is 2020 so whenever you finish something you walk away from it and you come back you start to think about things that you could have done a little bit differently or things you should have done so if you're ever working on something and you don't know what where to go next walk away from it and then come back to it and you can approach it with a new calm and a new light and a new perspective um, so you can see here I'm kind of throwing down the, the basic blues for her jacket I'm not going to do any hard lighting or reflective lighting it's just going to be very flat um, but I like this blue, this blue goes really well <clears throat> with this jacket excuse me and she has those uh, I guess like false knuckles that she puts on top um, I like the bandages that match the blue jacket I, I just think that her design is very sleek and very cool looking and uh, I'm very 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 fond of it and the new Teen Titans book that's out it's very fun to read it's very simple to read and it's an enjoyable read <clears throat> so here's the main part of her of her body is white so I'm not going to color it much what I actually did and I cut it out of the video because it took a little bit of time is uh, I, I actually went over it with a white um, white out actually simply just white out and uh, it didn't really give me the effect that I wanted so I cut it out of the video because I feel like it didn't really matter I think if I would have drawn on a tan piece of paper then that really would have made the outfit pop out a lot but because I didn't uh, I drew it on a regular white paper it you really can't see it it kind of a waste of time so I cut it out of the video now you can see me here uh, laying down some of the grays uh, her her outfit, her one piece is segmented with gray on top, white in the middle, white on the legs, and then there's gray again on the boots. So I like when things have sequence and motif and have kind of color patterns that are well established. And uh, this is definitely a very, very well thought out character design. If you don't know who Kenneth Rockefeller is, he, uh, I think he did a comic called Velocity. And then he moved on to do, I think, Superman. He's done a little bit of Batman. And uh, he's on Teen Titans right now. And I think next he's going to be working on The Ultimates. Um, and he has a Tumblr page, Mitographia, the, the Art of Kenneth Rockefeller. And all of his artwork is in extremely inspiring to me. He's one of the guys that I really look up to. And it's just amazing to see how he works. And then he posts a lot of panel work before it comes out in the comics so then you can kind of see how he sketches it out how he watercolors it and then you see the finished version which has been retouched for the comics and it's just gorgeous to look at um, here I'm coming in with a little bit darker grays and kind of giving a little bit of shadow but again I'm not going to go too hard on any shadows and go too crazy here um, I'm going to keep this one simple I'm going to keep it straightforward because the point of this was just to get a little bit of a sketch done I've been on vacation the last few days and I've had a couple of things come up personally um, you know things happen and uh, you have to learn to deal with it and then get back on track so I thought I would do this and uh, I love her boots uh, I don't know what else to say I mean she has a really cool design I really I really 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 dig it um, yeah, and uh, it's it's very funny because in the same comic, the Teen Titans comic, um, Red Robin, I'm I'm not very fond of his design. I feel like it's too busy. There's too much happening and too much going on. Now you can see me here kind of throwing a color into the background, and that is a green because I felt that it would go nicely, this kind of winter green would go nicely with um, what she is, uh, what colors are on her as well as make the white of her outfit pop out a little bit more because if not it just kind of blends into the background um, this turned out to be a much more tedious process than I wanted because the brush I used actually has a brush tip and it took a lot longer to just kind of lay all these flat colors out um, if I would have picked a color that had a chisel tip like one of my letter set colors or something 
then it would have gone a lot quicker. Um, I'm not going to post which markers I'm using because I used quite a few. Uh, but if you're interested, I used a basic, um, just any random blue, and then to give it that darker tone, I used a cool gray on top. And it's the same gray that I use for the flats on her chest. And then for the shadows on her chest, I used a darker warm gray. Um, and then I used a, it's not a gold marker, but it's a gold yellow. So it's not golden, it's not shiny. But it's just that um, kind of mustardy yellow uh, to color in her chest and some of the uh, decorations on her outfit. And as for her skin, I used a very light brown. I think it's a um, Letraset light brown or tan. And then I used uh, for the for the darks and for the shadows of her skin, I used another Letraset, and it was a uh, a brown, uh, just a straight brown. And for her hair, I used two tones, a, a lighter and a darker brown, but they were from a different set of markers, and they don't actually have the name on them. So I, I really don't remember where I got them or what they're called. But they're kind of hexagonal, and they're black, and they don't have any writing on them other than the uh, marker color number or whatever. So I think I used TN2 and GR4 or something. And as for the green, it's a winter green. Uh, and it's a Prisma color, pretty straightforward marker. None of these markers are very expensive. Uh, they're not Copics. They're not too fancy. They're not too anything. They're just kind of standard markers. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, it's really quick to do. Now here I'm laying down um, some pencils. I decided to give a little bit of shadow to the white, and in order to do that, I did it with uh, very softly with some lead pencil. I use 0.7 lead to draw because I like to keep it very loose. Um, so it's easy to kind of run your finger over the lead as you put it down on the paper and kind of smear it and give it that shady look without it having too many rough lines and rough edges. So hopefully that makes sense a little bit. And now to come in at the end, because I had to use that dark marker, I feel like it ate into a lot of my lines. So I'm going to go ahead and outline a couple things here. And I'm using a 0 0.5, and I think this is a micron, um, a micron pen and it's a 0 0.5 thickness. So it's not quite as thick as my brush pen, but it, it lays down a nice amount of ink and uh, you really see some of the figures and shadows pop out as a result. Um, I like doing this. I also threw in some black in the eye just you know, to give it a little bit more depth. I feel like color contrast helps add a lot of depth and helps add a lot of personality. So Again, hindsight, I should have added some pink to her um, cheeks and her eye just to make it a little bit more lively and pop out a little bit more. But as always, hindsight is 2020, so I'm not going to get too worried about that. And just finishing up by coloring in the shadow, I'm going to lay some black in on that and just kind of finish that up. And here's the finished piece. You can kind of see it's pretty straightforward, nothing, no fancy shadows, no fancy anything. Um, but I'm very satisfied with the way it came out. The proportions are really nice. She looks like a really well fleshed out character. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.